So as we prepare for Witch Queen, there will be some activities that will be leaving the game itself. In these activities or these seasonal passes, you can actually get some great weapons that, again, you will not be able to get after Witch Queen goes live. In this video, I will not be going over things that may be great weapons that you should be able to get in the next season because activities are going to continue. These are going to be what I feel are probably 20 great weapons that you should get now before the end of the season because after that, you will not be able to get these weapons. Again, these weapons are not picked in any particular order. I did use some criteria though. Again, it has to be things that are leaving the game. It has to be things that will potentially be utilized well within like champion mods because we know what the champions are going to be now for next season. Potentially things that could work well with void builds because void 3.0 is coming with the dawn of witch queen and so i think anything that has a void burn is also going to be really useful and some of those weapons sometimes are hard to come by first off let's talk about what you can get from either the seasonal quest or from the seasonal pass again each of these weapons will require you to own a specific seasonal pass for these items but again i think they're all useful at this point salvager salvo so this is a great grenade launcher that allows you to have ambitious assassin Demolishes, Vorpal, or Chain Reaction. This weapon actually allows you to pick from the different uh, modifiers, which you can use depending on what type of activity you're in. So again, this weapon is really great because with, especially with Chain Reaction and Demolitionist, you do some crazy, crazy builds and kill a lot of things very quickly. Tico's is a great bow. It's a solar bow. It's an exotic. It comes again on the seasonal pass. But for that particular bow, one of the things that's great about it is what you can basically track targets when you're not when you're hip firing and it'll basically it's really great in nightfalls to be able to shoot a bunch of targets at once and then when you precision shoot whatever arrows you landed with those ones that are hip fired actually cause them to explode so it's really great for ad control again arrows bows are going to be one of the champion mods for next season and the fact that it's solar which is rather unique is something you definitely want to get no composure is a great fusion rifle again it comes from a seasonal quest this one, again, is one where you can pick between four standard modifiers, which are Feeding Frenzy, Heating Up, Reservoir Burst, and High Impact Reserve. So again, a great weapon that can allow you to do a lot of great damage, not only against, you know, you know champions and against bosses, but again, it's great for ad control, and it's Void. And with next season being the Void rework, I would definitely get this one as soon as possible. Lorenz Driver, you guys all know this if you played Crucible because it's a thing that's one-shotting you all over the place. It is useful in PvE also, but in Crucible, it's been very, very good. You could, Basically, you can get one shot because if you get a precision kill with this weapon, then it does a lot of additional damage. In PvE, you have some abilities where you basically get these things called telemetries that you get from marking targets. You get three of those, and then you do bonus damage. So again, again, it's also Void. So again, next season's Void. So I would definitely, definitely, definitely get this one as soon as possible and work on the Catalyst. And for any of the exotics I mentioned, make sure you get the Catalyst before it's next season. Ascendancy. This, again, is another seasonal quest item. It uh, The one thing about this is it has Explosive Light. It's a rocket launcher. Explosive Light is a fairly unique perk. If you think about the old Wendigo, this is the perk that was on Wendigo. It isn't as great as it used to be. They did buff it a little bit. But again, it's a unique weapon. I like to keep unique weapons because you never know when Bungie's going to decide to buff them a little bit. So I would definitely get this one as well. After that, let's kind of talk about what you can get from seasonal events. So each of the seasons has a key seasonal event that you can play through. And at the end, you can get particular rewards. In addition, you can also get Umbral Ingrams. And in most cases, if you've leveled up the seasonal pass for those items or the seasonal activity, then you actually are able to enhance those umbrals to get specific type of weapons. So let's talk about those next. So from season 12, you all know that the Wrathborn hunts, this, it's not my favorite activity. I don't think much anyone likes them. There aren't any great weapons, but there are some good weapons you could get from this. One of those is Deafening Whisper. Deafening Whisper is a wave void grenade launcher. So again, the wave ones basically put a like a wave of energy on the ground that can take out ads over a large area. So it's very unique. And again, it's void. So that's why I think it's something you could use. Some good roles in this are Ambitious Assassin, Killing Win, Rampage, and Autoloading Holster. So again, if you want to play through Wrathborn Huts, this is a good one you get. The other thing you get is Royal Chase. It's a scout rifle that's void. That's very rare. There are some other ones you can get. But again, this one actually is a hard hitting one too. So with scout rifles being champion mods again, 
this would be a good one to potentially get. And it has some decent perks. No distractions, dragonfly, thresh, and multi-kill clip. So again, this weapon is a harder hitting scout rifle, so it's slower. But in Nightfalls, especially if you're trying to stun champions, this could be a really great one and also allow you to take down Void Shields and potentially go into Void Builds that you would have for next season. So for Season 13, you obviously had Battlegrounds. So Battlegrounds will remain, and we'll see if these weapons could potentially stay around, but my guess is probably not. They'll probably reload the loot pool. And there's some great weapons that you can get from the Battlegrounds uh, activity. First off is Extra Extraordinary Rendition. This is a submachine gun. Now this is a submachine gun. You could probably use it in PvP. It's primarily a PvE uh, submachine gun and it has an incredible list of rolls. I think I had like 15 of these in my vault before I cleaned up at one point. But just, just listen to some of these perks. Overflow, Outlaw, Subsistence, Zen Moment, Multi-Kill Club, Thresh, Rampage, Frenzy, Tap the Trigger and One for All. Again, just an amazing list of perks that you can get on this weapon. Threaded Needle. Threaded Needle is a void, again you see the theme, a void linear fusion rifle that does a lot of DPS to bosses. Part of that's because of the seasonal mod this season, but even in the future with the fact that those have been buffed, it's going to still be a contender in the next few seasons. So for this one, you can get Dragonfly, Vorpal, Frenzy, Thresh, Multi-Kill Clip, Killing Wind, Rapid Hit, and Clown Cartridge. Again, ton of great perks, so definitely get in there and do this. And then Imperial Needle. Imperial Needle is a bow. It's Void Bow, so there aren't a ton of Void Bows out there. This one actually is a fast firing bow, so I love it personally. I just love the feel of it. And again, with next season being bows, and if you don't happen to have Le Monarch on at a particular time, this could be a good substitute you could use for taking out champions. So it comes with Archer's Tempo, Quick Draw, Frenzy, Opening Shot, and Thresh. And again, this is a lightweight, so you move faster, and it also just feels great. Like, if you do this with Opening Shot, it just feels like you're just like almost like a sniper, like you can really get in really quickly, shoot things, and again, I really love it as, as a bow. I don't see a lot of people talking about it, but it's one of my favorites. For season 14, you have the override activity, and this definitely will be going away. And for this, one of the best weapons in the game is Chroma Rush. Chroma Rush is a kinetic auto rifle. Again, auto rifles will be used for champion mods in the next season, so it'll be really good. And this one, this one is like your Swiss Army knife. It's a similar to Extraordinary Rendition, and that has an incredible set of perks. One of the things I love about this too is it fires like a laser, like it's really, really solid. And in PvP or PvE, I can use this and it works really well. Let me go over some of the perks. You can get Feeding Frenzy, Subsistence, Tunnel Vision, Dynamic Sway Reduction, Moving Target, Kill Clip, Rampage Thresh, Adrenaline Junkie, and Tap the Trigger. So as you can tell, it has a ton of really great perks. And again, it fires really well. It's, it's something that I use both in PvE and PvP, and I love this weapon. In addition to this, you can also get Ignition Code. Ignition Code is a blinding grenade, but on a kinetic grenade launcher, which again, there's not a ton of those. So again, really unique weapon. You should try to get this as soon as possible. On this one, you can get Vorpal, Demolitionist, Frenzy, One for All, Thresh, Danger Zone, and Ambitious Assassin. Again, blinding grenades are really great in PvE, especially with new activities coming out, raids, things like that. They're really going to come in handy. And having a kinetic one in the kinetic slot, so you can use other weapons, so you don't have to use something in your energy slot, and you can free that up for other special weapons, would definitely be something that would work in your favor. So I would definitely get this. Finally, in this season, you also have the Astral Alignment. And there's not a ton of great weapons in here, but there is a arc bow called Wolf Tone Draw, which allows you to get Archer's Tempo, Shoot the Loot, Dragonfly, Frenzy, and Demo. It's similar to Imperial Needle in that it's a lightweight frame. So really great bow. The fact that it has Dragonfly allows you to use basically a legendary bow to be able to clear a lot of ads really quickly and have them explode, you know, in big bunches. So that would definitely be one I get. So again, as a reminder, all of those are the seasonal activities. You can do the seasonal activities. You can also use Umbrals if you've leveled up those activities to be able to get guaranteed drops of these weapons. So you get umbrals all over the place. If it were, if it were me, this is one of the things I would spend a ton of time in getting these sorts of weapons. So you have them. So you have them for the next season after they're going to be gone. Now with that, you, there are also some other weapons that are in core playlist activities that again, I think you should try to make an attempt at. Again, they could potentially stay through next season, but just in case, it's probably good to get these. So for you Crucible fans, one of the things I would definitely get if you could, it's not the most meta weapon, but it's definitely a good one, is Sorrow's Verse. Now at the beginning of the season, I was actually breaking a lot of these down, 
but it's actually a great weapon. It's a 600 RPM auto rifle, which is similar to Gnawing Hunger. It shoots fairly straight. The other great thing about this is it comes with a ton of perks. And again, if you're playing Crucible, this thing's gonna drop for you all the time. Some of the perks you can get are Feeding Frenzy, Subsistence, Outlaw, Tunnel Vision, Dynamic Sway Reduction, Tap the Trigger, Zen Moment, Rampage, Frenzy, Demolicious, Multi-Kill Clip, Thresh, Adrenaline Junkie, and Snapshot Sight. So you can see great PV and PVP roles, but I will tell you, I was, I was surprised when I went to the last Iron Banner, I just used this because I was trying to get energy weapon kills. I was surprised how good this weapon really is. So again, I would definitely get this one. And then again, if you want to dip your toe into Trials, I would definitely get the Messenger when you get a chance. Obviously, if you get into Depth, that'd be great. But if you can't, the base Messenger has some great perks. And you can still use it even... I use this weapon even in PvE for when we need Pulse Rifle things for killing champions and stuff like that. It still comes in handy. But for PvP, this thing's a monster. So it comes with Rapid Hit, Zen Moment, Desperado, Kill Clip, and Frenzy. And Desperado is a perk that you can get on very few weapons. So... It does make the weapon a little unwieldy, the control, but again, it's very unique, and I would definitely grab this when you get a chance. We also know that the Presage mission is going to go away, and the Presage mission is where you get Dead Man's Tail. Dead Man's Tail is an exotic scout rifle that basically lets you do additional damage based on crits you hit. With the Catalyst, hip fire becomes a little bit easier. In the Presage mission, after every time you do it, you basically get an opportunity to get a Dead Man's Tail with a different set of perks. The perks you'll want to probably be looking for are Vorpal, Subsistence, Snapshot, or Killing Wind. Again, each of those is from a different run. Vorpal's really great for doing damage for DPS. It's also going to be great against champions because scout rifles are going to be champion mods next season. So that would be a good role to get. But again, anything with Vorpal, either Vorpal, Subsistence, Snapshot, or Killing Wind are great roles on that gun. Now, I know some of you hate going into Gambit, but there is a reason I would go into Gambit this season. Again, this could stay over to next season depending on what they do with the Gambit loophole, but I would definitely get a Servant Leader. The Servant Leader is a kinetic scout rifle. And again, scout rifles are going to be good the next season with champions. That is very fast firing. And it fires, like I said, almost on a line. So you fire, it bounces back. You can just stay on point and on target. And it's very, very quick. I found this both effective in PvP and in PvE. And it has some great perks. Rapid hit. Shoot the loot. Subsistence. Tunnel vision. No distractions. Rampage. Kill clip. Osmosis, Feeding Frenzy, Multi-Kill Clip, Thresh, and Snapshot. So again, it's definitely a weapon that you can use in both PvP and PvE. In PvE, it has great range. Again, depending on the perks you get, it reloads really quickly, fires really quickly, and can definitely take ads out fairly quickly. I even found hip fire if this is pretty good. So again, if you want to go into Gambit, I would definitely get this weapon this season. And then finally, a Nightfall. So for Nightfall this season, there is one remaining weapon I would definitely get if you get an opportunity to get it, and that's the Paladrome. The Paladrome is a hard-hitting void hand cannon that has a great set of perks. It's really strong in PvP. There's a lot of people use it. Like, if you look into, into the meta for most PvP activities, it's being used. And even in PvE, it's definitely going to be a great weapon, especially when, when uh, champion mods come back for hand cannons. So some of the perks you can get are Overflow, Outlaw, Quick Draw, Killing Wind, Subsistence, Thresh, Rampage, and Rage Fighter. So again, just an overall great weapon that you can use both in PvE and PvP and definitely comes in handy. So I would definitely get that. And that's it, guys. Like I said, these are about 20 weapons. Some of them are great. Some of them are really niche sort of things. But again, regardless of whether they're niche or not, you don't know what's going to happen in the next season. We know Void's going to be really important. And we know all of these weapons, some of them void, some of them not. All of these weapons are going to go away and will be impossible to get. So if you have some free time, you probably do at the end of the season. I would just go ahead and jump in, grab these things, do these activities. And again, if you like the video, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump to my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.